I'm James Greer, and we became James Greer Company based on a group of amazing, amazing people who are my very close friends, and we started singing together about 30 years ago, and here we are today, and I'm sitting with Kim Burrell <laughs> and Demarcus. So for the rest of my life, this song came from our project from 2005. Because of the season, because of the um, summertime, but this is a busy, busy place. There's a Ridge Marketplace okay. in Phoenix, North Phoenix, Arizona. And what's, what's here? Spitz Mediterranean food. <laughs> My blessing that God has blessed me with to open um, our first franchise restaurant. I don't own the franchise, but I own the restaurant under the franchise. And we are the first one um, of the franchise in the Arizona area. So very fortunate, very excited. It's right here this way. Spitz Mediterranean Street Food. Welcome to Spitz. Mediterranean Street Food. It's a Sunday afternoon, so we got a decent crowd in here today. Um, this is considered off season because this is when it's really hot in Arizona. We're talking, it's been 115, 116, 118 degrees, so the traffic slows down out here during that time of year, but we've been blessed to be steady. But another month or so, we're gonna be busy again like we were back in May. It's gonna be real busy, but this is this is my life currently. <laughs> What's going on, Gospel Diaries? Listen, I'm in this beautiful I'm in a beautiful city of Phoenix. You yes, know, I don't yes. normally do any episodes out here, but I feel so honored. It's a beautiful day, but it's hot. It's hot. But uh, <laughs> I'm in Desert Ridge. This, what's the name of this area? Desert Ridge Marketplace. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm with the iconic Mr. James Greer. So you're in for a treat. But right before we get started, as I always do, would you do me a favor and share this content because it's from my heart to yours. All right, let's take a moment here. Whew, get myself together. <laughs> <laughs> this is like so long overdue. How you doing? Can I shake your hand? Yes, absolutely. What do you mean? <laughs> Absolutely. So we saw each other at church today, yes. and I'd like to give a shout out to the sanctuary Man, here in Phoenix. Sanctuary, pastor by pastor by Pastor Jack Spencer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So in his sermon, um, I think his sermon was uh, "All You Can Eat." If, All if you I'm can not. eat. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, he he says something about being thankful, right? Yes. And yes. it reminds me of your current song. You mm -hmm. know, if I never go to China, Man. you know, if I never get that house on. On the hill, oh. I, you've done so much for me. You've done so much. <laughs> At best, huh, so you owe me thank you. Huh, after he explained it, huh, I said, Lord, huh, I thank you. Huh, I don't understand huh, why you had to allow it, huh, but I thank you. Huh. Uh, that I have the right to say thank you. I, I, and I have to say it. Like, <laughs> I have to say it. That's what he was talking about today. Mm -hmm. First of all, first of all, let's just say that's a preaching man. Mm -hmm, let's mm -hmm, just start mm -hmm. that. But anyway, <laughs> um, how do we not say thank mm -hmm. you? I mean, there's some things in life that we want, or some things we haven't accomplished, or some things that we're still striving for. But we just stop and take a look mm -hmm. at what God has. Mm -hmm. I tell myself all the time: somebody would give anything to have your hand in mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trade places with mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. We got so much to thank him for. Mm -hmm. Song, yes, sir. Uh, featuring the iconic, the iconic. Uh, sister Marat Brown Clark. Yes, sir. Uh, what do that song means to you? Uh, first and foremost, it was written by one of your hometown, one of my hometown. Uh, buddies. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. We call him Reverend. What's his nickname? It's Reverend June. June. We call him June. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Slip. Yep. Uh, Reverend June, and mm -hmm. also the meat, the message of the song. So, what do that song mean to you nostalgically? It means so much to me. And, and props to June. Mm -hmm. He and I just talked on the phone the other day for a couple hours, maybe two days ago. We're just talking about just the history of that song. That song was originally recorded by him, mm -hmm. Saints with a Vision, yes, yes. I believe in 1998. Mm -hmm. So 20 something years mm -hmm. ago. Thank you for food on my table. Said I know you're able. Wanna say thank you. That good? No. It was a hit. Mm -hmm. And I have always i fell in love with the song then taught it to every choir that i worked with you know i've read the choirs all my life taught to every choir and i said one day mm -hmm. i record this song. okay 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 but you know how the timing has to be right and all mm -hmm. that and then as you know it's been so long since we had music out we're talking 13 years but mm -hmm. 
came around to doing it, to doing a record again, and I was working with my choir in Minneapolis, Shadow Temple mm -hmm. uh, Choir, and talked to them, and we did do an offering one Sunday, mm -hmm. and almost didn't get to any further than that. <laughs> it's just one of those songs that Pastor Bay was like, "I like this song," and she <laughs> took, and just it turned to something else. We went someplace else with it, but that song says everything to me. If I can't, if I never taste another bite, see another sight, like the meat of the song is saying, if I never get some of the things that I want or mm -hmm. maybe never accomplish some of the things that I'm going for, mm -hmm. I still have so much to yeah, say yeah, thank absolutely. you for. Yeah. I just gotta say thank you for my life. Mm -hmm. Listen, we got we got we got our work cut out for us yes, because sir. I'm sitting with you and as everybody, I'm gonna take the glass now because everybody know I get emotional. I'm gonna <laughs> stop saying that, but I really do. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, draw this little, this wetness, this moisture oh, in the crack in my eyes. But man, my mind goes back to Gary, Indiana. Gary, Let's talk Indiana. about your humble beginnings. Yes, sir. I am a native of Gary, Indiana. Uh -huh. I often refer to myself as just a little church boy. Mm -hmm. I was raised by parents who were heavy in church, pretty much church of God in Christ. Really? It, it, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know how the, it veers, like some of the churches would kind of maybe leave the church of God in Christ, but the principal was still based on church of God in Christ. But mm -hmm. I was raised in strict holiness. Mm -hmm. My mom was um, a missionary. She also did, you know, back then they couldn't call women preachers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But she used to go to churches and run revivals mm -hmm. and she would speak. We call them preachers nowadays, but you couldn't say that. So she was a teacher or missionary. My dad was a deacon, um, and I was a church kid. And I was I was in I started out in the kids choir. Um, had to. <laughs> we didn't have a choice. We were church Sunday morning, mm -hmm. Sunday evening for YPWs, right, right, right. Sunday night service, Tuesday night service, Friday night service, and Saturday night young people service. Mm -hmm. That was our life. That's yeah, yeah. all we do. Yeah. We lived down the street. We could walk to the church. So church was our lives. Mm -hmm. And. Um, we, my brothers, we, we, they had us a group sing together. They called us the Grill Boys. Really? Uh, Ronald, who's a preacher. Okay. Ronald, Lawrence, Kenneth, and Clarence. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yep. Lawrence and Kenneth were a guitar players. Basically, okay. Clarence is a drummer okay. who played for my group in Gary, okay. starting out. Okay. And then I was the one who didn't play anything, but I was supposed to be the singer. I'm not a singer, but mm -hmm. I'm the one they made sing right. and lead songs and stuff mm -hmm. all the time as a little kid. Mm -hmm. Gary is the next door neighbor to Chicago. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chicago is what? The gospel music happened. Yes, yes. And so I'm raised mm -hmm. on that Chicago sound. Okay. And that Chicago sound was a heavy influence of the sound in Gary. Mm -hmm. So church, 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 musicals, musicals, musicals. Everybody was having musicals. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was, what's so funny is in the newspaper, there would be a section for the church events <laughs> of the newspaper. Was, was it the city news? Was yes, it like, oh, the really? game. Okay. Was, and so we would, they would, people would put their musicals and stuff in us. Every Saturday, I'm looking and saying, Daddy, can I go, can I go to this music? We went, I was at somebody's musical <laughs> every Saturday night <laughs> or Sunday afternoon. And that's how, that, and that, that was my upbringing. I had a natural love for gospel music. It was my life. Yeah. So I was running around to all the musicals and Went to Chicago when I got off the drive. When I was younger, my dad used to take me and pick me, pick me up. When I got old enough to drive. I was driving to all the musicals, everybody's stuff in Chicago. I was raised on the Saint. I was raised on Lavanya Whitley and Corinthian Temple. I was raised on um, Milton Brunson and the Tommies. Um, Ricky Diller and I were kids raised in our church choirs when he started New G. And and I can go on and on. Cosmopolitan Church of Prayer, five o'clock broadcast. Did you ever every... go to Cosmopolitan? As when you were... Yes, I was there when they did that live recording the Jesus and Work It Out. You were there in the eighties? I was. I think I was. I, oh, I, I can't tell my age. Watch I it. Almost over. messed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were there. Huh? I was there. What was the energy like? It was crazy. For real? It was crazy. And as a kid, so that's that's a common thing. That wasn't a common thing yeah. back then. You didn't have, everybody wasn't making hit records. Right. It was just the big names. Mm -hmm. And they were a big name. And they were just one of the most crazy singing choirs around. They mm -hmm. were the ones that we all took pattern after mm -hmm. with our choirs. And to be able to be in that atmosphere was like the biggest event of my life to mm -hmm. me at that time. Wow. To be there. to be, That was a historic moment. Yeah. Because to this day, how many years ago? That was in 1980. Yeah. And now people still say, how are you going to pay your rent? Yeah. All your money yeah. spent. Yeah. The iconic Diane Williams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I was there for that moment as a kid. Mm -hmm. We love you, Diane Williams. We okay. love you. <laughs> I see her sometimes and mm -hmm. she'll see my stories. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's Diane Williams. Diane Williams. <laughs> like, I, we honor you. Like, yeah. we never, I never forget. Those are the people that we watched mm -hmm. coming up as kids mm -hmm. that influence what we do now. Mm -hmm. One of my singers, Angie Stewart, she's that, you know, walk the aisle, go down. Diane Williams taught, taught us all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Watching those singers. Mm -hmm. So that was my environment as mm -hmm. a kid coming up in Gary. It was the Gary in Chicago. 
influence of music. Okay. That you know, Gary, we had our the Blakeleys. The Blakeleys. Oh yes, yeah. Um, the dad just passed away. Elder David Blakely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're left one of my singers to this day. Mm -hmm. We're left Blakely. But then we had Rita Preston. Rita. We must put a pin there. Come on, <laughs> come on. Let's give honor where honor is due. We must put a pin there. <laughs> And she, I know she's going to be watching this. She watched every episode. Really? So, Mama Rita, we love you. And That's we're going to talk sister. about you for I one second. I love, don't do that to me. <laughs> it's about getting emotional. Don't do that to me. So, his, his uh, her crew, his crowd, what, is, what was they like? Do you, do you remember them? Do, I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Rita and my she parents. We did, she Rita, you know, she changed my diapers. Really? Rita, we, we go, she was, she was friends with my parents, mm -hmm. so part of my influence was people like Rita. Mm -hmm. When she started his, what was that like? The best sound that I ever heard that came out of Gary, Indiana. Everybody wants singing like that. And Rita is Shirley Caesar Jr. Yeah. It's about setting up a song. Rita Preston, Rita Thomas, will set up a song and not get to sing. Because the anointing on her to set a song up, who needs to sing when she get down preaching before the song? Okay. That's what we that's what we, we learn from people like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Really? It was nothing less than amazing because like you you know we all knew that song. Yeah. But, as a, but then to see them, Mark Mark Geary was the was the keyboard player with his. Okay. And I believe I believe I could be wrong, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I believe Rita and Mark together made arranged that song. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Right, right, yep, right, right, yep. right, right, right. Yes. And yes, it was amazing yes. to watch. But first of all, let me back up a little bit. It was amazing to watch the birth of that ministry when she started her group because um, we knew her as a singer solo singer from around town all of our lives and a, and a musician then she started branched out and st she was a choir director then she branched out and started her own ministry and then to watch her evolve from that to being signed to savoy records uh -huh, uh -huh. so that was our first person that i can remember out of gary that was signed to a major label mm -hmm. which was rita thomas mm -hmm. that we knew and to watch her do it gave us the hope mm -hmm. that we could actually mm -hmm. not just sing as just local people singing their musicals, but we could actually become national figures mm -hmm. as well. Mm Like, as a music enthusiast, as myself. Okay. 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 <laughs> you ain't close enough. I'd be liking to touch <laughs> But anyway, as a music enthusiast, as myself, you know, one will just go on this, 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 I don't know, on this path to just find as much as they can about an artist, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Lord, have mercy, Lord, and behold, I got to look and look and look and look and look and <laughs> And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I found your first ever recorded project, uh -oh. and that was with the choir, the True Holding and Singers. Yes. And you all should see that on your screens right now. So let's talk about that, the True Holding and Singers. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so the True Holding Singers were birthed from, I was a member of Deliverance Temple, Church of God in Christ, mm -hmm. in Indiana, Bishop Bobby Warren, Eddie Bobby Warren, in Gary, Indiana. And, um, a singer by the name of the time Sheila Austin, who was a very popular singer during that time, uh, who was traveling everywhere. She was uh, recording music. As a matter of fact, she recorded a project with One Way Records out of Chicago. Remember One Way? Sheila, you talking about Sheila Austin Jones? Did I, she went to Brazier Church? You see, she was, was light yeah, yeah. And she had a song, If I Don't Make It, It's Nobody's Fault But Mine. Probably. Uh, we've got to live this thing, amen. The Holy Ghost, He's here to God. Oh, 
boss, man. <laughs> and so she she was getting ready to do a live recording. Right. And I was the choir director at Deliverance Temple. And so Sheila asked me to put together some singers for her live recording and to help her teach the songs and train them because they thought I was a good director back then <laughs> and to help train them for her recording. And I did so. I was honored. It was Sheila Austin. I was a kid. I was, I was probably 18 years old. And, um, and I did that and loved it. We did the live recording right there at Deliverance Temple. It was great. Can we get she, the address? Do you remember the address? Let's, I'm testing your mind now. 34 something Virginia Street Thank you. and okay. Gary Diaz. 34. <laughs> I want to say okay, 3419. Okay. I could be wrong, but 34 is the Virginia, Gary okay. Indiana. Gary Indiana. Okay, I hope I got that right, but okay. I'm sure I got uh -huh. it right. Uh -huh. So you're at the uh -huh. church. So we did a live recording uh -huh. that was great, it was wonderful. But the group, the people that we put together, enjoyed being together, singing so much, till people start asking, could we put that and keep together as a group? Mm -hmm. And so we started having rehearsals. Green, didn't know nothing about anything. And the people just started inviting us, like it was musical music, people started inviting us to sing. So we just, we didn't have a name. I was like, I don't know what the name of group. And so I, I gave it the name, the True Holiness Singers. Mm. And, um, you know, based on, you know, how we would talk, stuff like that, and what we thought we represent people. So I said, we're going to call on Brother James Greer and the True Holiness Singers. That's how they came about. Well, I was about 18 years old. <coughs> Excuse me. Fast forward about a year, a few years later. I was working in a mall in Gary, Indiana called The Village. Okay. I worked at a clothing store. And down the hall from that clothing store was a gospel music Come on, store. watch yourself now. Okay, I'm with you. It's called Gospel Box <laughs> okay. Records was a music store. Okay. The owner's name was James. Can you remember his last name right now? James also started a label. Mm -hmm. now, I'm about to tell you if you remember exactly uh -oh. who he was. He had an artist by the name of Katie Sankey. And she sang a song called, I don't know why I have to cry sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I'll find out by and by. Mm -hmm. That song swept the nation. Mm -hmm. It swept the nation. And so I got hired to work at the record store because I knew, come on, I knew, I knew more about gospel music than he did. That was my entire life. I, so I was able to order records. I knew what was new. But also part of my job, people, distributors were calling every day to ship out boxes of Katie Sankey records because... He didn't have a record. He, that was his record company. He didn't have a distributor. So they were ordering directly from him. Mm. So I'm shipping out boxes of albums every day. She was selling records off every gospel station in the country. Was playing. It was a major hit. Sold records and records and thousands and thousands of records. Then he found out that I had a group and that we were singing. And he came one day to one of the musicals to hear us sing. He called me in a meeting. So I want to talk to you. He's like, um, you're young. But I like what you're doing. He said, I want to record your group. And I was like, yes. And they, I was 19 years old when Gospel Box gave me my first album. Oh, and that's, that's that album Gospel that you, Box yep, from. Gospel Box, yep, they gave me that album. They gave me that album. Yep, that was my first Songs on the project? I did not. I was not a, I was not a, I was a, an arranger. Okay, so you arranged. I definitely George arranged. I definitely arranged. But um, we did cover songs. I know there was a writer in gear by the name of Gregory Marshall. Gregory wrote some of the songs. Eddie Scott. Eddie wrote something. I'm trying to remember, I can't remember if David Blakely wrote on that project or not, but we had writers in Gary, mm -hmm. and they wrote songs that mm -hmm. were on the, that was on mm -hmm. that first album. Okay, yep. so look, in Harvey, Illinois, and it's not too far from Gary, you know where Harvey is. Yeah, absolutely. There's a church called True Holiness Church. True Holiness Church, got to cry. <laughs> now, I'm going to I'm I'm just ask you this. Did you all ever perform there as the True Holiness We did thing? sing there. As the True Holiness Church. As the True Holiness Church, we absolutely. <laughs> Janet... <laughs> Uh, Jaren Harris hey, Sutton. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She, yep, they invited us to sing. We sang yeah. there. As a matter of fact, I remember, I remember. I think Ricky was directing Portland Street Church yeah. then, I yeah. believe. And I think we saw her go over there, sing on the musicals and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, we used to sing over there for Janet. We sure did. Wow. I think, I, I said we stayed together maybe like eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a little discouraged. We had gotten signed back then to a label called Daystar. And they were under Benson. Yeah. Remember Benson was the big thing. That's yeah. when that's who started. That's when they started yeah. out with Richard Smallwood, uh, Thomas, yeah, Vanessa yeah, Bell, yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. They had signed all them. But we got I did a live recording in Gary, and they picked it up and they took that picked that recording up. They were gonna put it out. And by the time this happened, now Richard Smallwood and all those guys, their records had blown. They they were going crazy, and I think most of them they owed second records to, and so they were still working on those. So the new names were kind of shelved. And my record got shelved for like three or four years. They would call me and say, hey, we're going to mix the record. And here's your release date. Your release date is December, blah, 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 blah. 
November come they call and say, sorry, we're not going to make the release date. They, they took us off the schedule. We're going to try it again. They'll call back again and say, okay, now they got you off for June. That went off for like three or four years to the point that the record just was never coming out. We recognized it wasn't going to happen. I was young. I was discouraged. I was a kid. I was discouraged. I was like, I'm over this. I'm tired. And so um, I kind of felt like I had peaked out in Gary, not just not gospel, just because at that time, singing gospel wasn't something that we were thinking of as a career, which is something that was right, a passion right, that we right, loved. Yeah. So I feel like I had peaked out with the jobs and all that. And I was kind of tired, so I decided I wanted to relocate. Mm -hmm. And um, so we probably hadn't been singing for maybe that last year or two. And I relocated to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm. Had never been there. Packed up everything, gave away all everything in my house, my clothes. I had worked in two clothes. I had a bunch of clothes. Gave clothes to a young man who was a little bit less fortunate and packed up and moved. And here's a transparent moment. I was tired of the church stuff. I was tired of all the shenanigans that come yeah, along with church, yeah, and we absolutely. know how that goes, right? And so I moved to get away from all that that I knew. So I could just go to Minneapolis and start my little life over and just live my life and just be James. And um, some about those prophets that speaking your life, they got to speak in my life saying, yep, you're going to go. And when you go, God's going to meet you right there. And now you're going to see what God has for you. And one person looked at me and said, they're going to be hearing your name back here in, in uh, Gary, Indiana. And I'm just like, okay. Went there, no intentions of doing any of that. But then started living my life, got my first job. My first job I went to, one of my first jobs, I believe, one of the higher ups walked over to me and said, is your name James? And I said, yes. He said, do you know Billy Steele? <laughs> I said, yes, I do. He used to play for my group. He said, well, he, he lives here now. He said, he told me that you are an amazing choir director. I'm the minister of music of the Church of God in Christ State Choir. I want you to come teach the choir. So, <laughs> now my job moved to get away from all of that. Mm -hmm. There it found me again. Went and talked to the state choir and saw that he ended up being my pastor years later, Dwayne Hill, Pastor Dwayne Hill. But um, and that's where it started. Taught the state choir song. And it started from there. People started asking me to come here, direct, come do this, come do that. And someone finally asked me, Elder Fage, pastor of Unity Temple, Church of God in Christ, asked me to come put together a musical to raise money for their building fund. And said, Can you please put together a group to sing that night? It's like, sure. I did it. I called some singers and I got about six or seven singers and we did a couple of songs. We did Old Lamb by Yolanda Adams and something else. And my, my best friend, Gene, who had moved to Minneapolis with me, who still sings with me to this day. One of the singers was Gene. Gene sang Old Lamb by Yolanda. We did that. You know how the, the, the you know how God blesses with the moment. And so now people can't let that moment go. Right. So now they're starting to call. That was a one event. Just like the two holding this thing is one mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. So people starting to call saying, man, can you bring that group to come sing? I was like, oh, we're really not a group. In my mind, I'm like, we're not getting back into this again. Mm -hmm. I said, we're not a group. Oh, that was just a one-off. It's, it's like, how could you not, that, the anointing and the, that we haven't even heard a sound like that. Because I did bring that Gary sound, the yeah. Chicago sound. That sound, I was like, oh, I don't know. Then the group members start calling me saying, hey, man, can we just, people call me asking me, can we just go do this one thing? It's like, you know what? We'll do this one thing after that. Like, let's just call it a wash. And it was one of the bigger events in the Minneapolis, in the St. Paul area, for like midnight music, was one annual midnight music was a big deal, a big deal. So I told him, yes, we'll do it. So the night before the musical, he, he said, I gotta tell you something, you might be mad at me, but they called me back and asked me the name of the group to put on the program. I was too embarrassed that we didn't have a name. Mm -hmm. So I said, James Green Company. Mm -hmm. I said, are you kidding me? He's like, no. I said, I almost want to think this is a group, a real group. He's like, well, I just don't want to say we didn't have a name. So, so, so they're gonna call for James Green Company. There, there wow. was. And that, that was the first gig at James Green Company. And here we are, I don't know how many years later. Mm -hmm. Records, who else is a good one too? <laughs> Talisa and Gary Stinson. Really? Talisa's my friend for years. Mm -hmm. And I know Talisa through Wilfred Moore. Wilfred Moore was my manager for yeah. a long time. And so Wilfred Moore and Talisa were friends for many years. So I met Talisa through Wilfred years ago. And um, fast forward or back. I can't remember the order how it happened. Uh -huh. We're talking years. Uh -huh. At some point, you ain't that old now. Mm. <laughs> At some point, Gary was working with me. Okay. And um, Gary introduced me to Born Again Records. He had a relationship with Barnett Williams mm -hmm. and Born Again Records. And Gary introduced me to Born Again. And, and the deal didn't work out then. Um, for whatever reasons, who knows what it was. I didn't know nothing about the business. I don't even know the business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I just know that several years later, we reconnected. We were going around like to Bobby Jones and stuff singing. 
here's a funny thing, Maurice. Like, you would think that I would have known a little bit because I already had that record I was a little kid, mm -hmm. but I didn't really know anything. Mm -hmm. And so we were going around singing at, like, Bobby Jones. Most people that would go to Bobby Jones to sing, they were because they, they were promoting projects. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just went because somebody to got us on there. Mm -hmm. And every time we would go, God would just bless. Like, we would just sing, and God would just bless. So everybody thought we were there promoting the record. Mm -hmm. So everybody would be coming and saying, what is your record? And I was like, I don't have a record. Well, who are you signed to? I'm like, I'm not signed to anybody. They would just look at me like, are you kidding me not? I said, no. And they would say, well, let me tell you this. Keep singing. Because y'all, you know, and all that. And I was just like, yeah, we're just here because somebody invited us. One time we went to go sing. We didn't have a musician. I was backstage saying, anybody know how to play Peace Be Still? Okay, okay. And this is the key is in. We start, we don't do the verse, we start here. The music's like, I got you, I'll play. He came up and he played. We walked on the stage saying, Peace Be Still. Shut the place down. Mm -hmm. Not not us, the anointing. Mm -hmm. Shut the place down. And that to me was kind of the beginning because Born Again and were there. They were, people were all there. So many people from GMWA. And they, you know, tears were everywhere because they felt like it honored, mm -hmm. it honored Reverend James Cleveland. I never forget the people born again put me to the side and said, "Man, remember us? We had your demo back." It's like, man, I never forget. He said, "Y'all got the spirit on y'all." He said, "Y'all, you know, they weren't necessarily church people. They were just, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so y'all got something on y'all. We need to talk." And that's how those things started happening. We kept going back, and Bobby Jones kept opening that door for us. Nobody knew us from right, a can right. of paint. I never forget, even Richard Small was said to me, "Man, you don't have a deal." He said, "Man, y'all can sure sing." Keep that group together. I promise you, we're gonna be hearing from you all. Skip Barrett was with Word Records mm -hmm. then. Yeah. And Skip said to me, "I may not have a spot here for what you do. Right, right. But somebody gonna have a spot mm -hmm. for what you do. Y'all hold on." And that it it turned it turned out to be true. It it was years later. Mm -hmm. Years later, um, we've been singing at least 12, 13 years before somebody actually came. Mm -hmm. And before Born Again came and gave us that deal, we had been singing a long time. Years. Yeah. Music is ministry. Music is ministry and when it touches you you want it to touch somebody yes. else you want to let somebody else know. yes yeah. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Giant, look, i'll be sitting in the people will come in and for some reason I, I i'll try to feel their spirit yeah and i say oh i got something and i'll just play it and, and just let what they need it wait a it minute be, <laughs> it'd be just what they need they like they come up to the guy who is this playing yeah. yeah you know so i you know yeah. music is ministry so i'll be playing this this album, this is the, the next level album. I'm going to put it on the screen, but you all have a song on that album, Power. Power. That was the first time I was introduced Power. to the song, right? I was talking about um, the Walk the Floor singer, mm -hmm. yeah, that we all grew up watching the Diane Williams and the mm -hmm. Ethel Holloways mm -hmm. and all yes. that. Angie and all of us, we grew up under those, mm -hmm. watching those, mm -hmm. those legendary singers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where, how did you come across the song? Yvette Flunder. She didn't write it. She, she recorded it. She's the original yeah. artist of that song. Thank you. Yvette Flunder, <laughs> City of Refuge. Really? Oh, Didn't yeah. Know. Yep. So Donnell was Davis with. was working with you too on this, huh? And to this oh, day, really? and he produced a new one. He produced, I want to say thank this you. This was early. Yeah, we've been, early Donnell and I have been friends. We're together. That's one of my best friends. They surprised me. came out here for my birthday. Really? Yeah, but uh, that's one of my closest friends. So yeah, he produced. Okay. he was producing back then. So you heard the song. And we, we were singing it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And it became something we couldn't go out without singing. Okay. I'll never forget we were singing at Great America. We were singing at Six Flags in Illinois. And I think Donald Lawrence and Tri City were on that thing that day. And we started singing Power. You know, wherever the artists are until their time came out, they all, all the Tri City singers came out from where they were. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And we're by the stage and, you know, doing, you know, doing what we all do when, they, when people are singing and we're enjoying it. We walked off the stage and some guys put us to the back and said, we need y'all to sing that song on the Spell Awards. Mm -hmm. That song right there. We never got to do it because it was some things with the record label and all that that didn't happen, but we, we couldn't go out without singing that song. So it made sense to put it on the record because oh. we couldn't go out without any place we go. Like, we had to sing Power. Mm -hmm. We sing to you. We sing to you. Please accept. more time say you are great you are great mario and break me to be great mm -hmm. i hear you say we sing to you we sing to you please accept uh-huh
to say we serve an up. We serve an awesome God. Mm -hmm. Lord, you are awesome. The song is like a portrait. Oh. And it's almost like when you listen to the, the, the words, the verse, the verses, it's almost like you're just uh, mentally watching the painter just paint this beautiful Ooh, image. Man. Ooh. Ooh, that song Ooh. gets to me. I can't, I can't take that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, Wait a minute. We're Let's talking talk about, about the faithfulness of mm -hmm. God. Yes. So we start with the writer, Fair mm -hmm. Evans. I believe in multi jewel. Yes. Yep. Pianist. Yep, yes. yep, yep. Faithful is he. When, when we were in the process of putting together that project, he sent me songs. I got stuck right there. Just tears. That song, when you talk about, we talked earlier about the, the trials and the tribulations, and the things we just have to face in everyday life, the challenges that come, the things that when you're blindsided by life, everything seems to be going just right, and something out of nowhere hits you so mm. hard and turns your life completely upside down. And I'm, I'm talking from something that I'm, that I'm just, just coming through now. Never saw it coming. And, and, and let me throw this in, the enemy is so, so conniving and cunning, but he's also so clever, is that when he can't get you, he comes and starts attacking what's closest to you, and now has come through my children. And the attack had been strong on my children. And I don't think nothing can hurt you more than when, when, you're, when, when, you're, when your children are under attack and your children are going through things. And that's the kind of space that I'm in now. And... Through life experience, I've been some of the hardest places that I could not see myself recovering from. I've been in situations that seemed like there was just no way out. I could not see myself in 2015 coming out from the depression when I lost my mother in January, a nephew in July, another nephew murdered in uh, December. We're not talking about people that weren't around me. The one that was murdered in July had been in my home for three or four days, left there, got shot, put on life support, died a few days later. The other one used to be in my house every day. I was more like a father figure to him. These people that I loved, that were, that were, they, were, they were engraved in my heart. And I lost them tragically and suddenly. And if anybody know anything about grief and grieving the death of a loved one, that's probably one of the hardest things in life that you have to go through. And I dealt with three in one year, starting in January with my mother. And I just, Eric, I couldn't see my way out of that one. Mm. Um, I didn't know what depression was. Right, right, right. I heard right. people talk about it. And I'm just like, how can you be depressed? Mm -hmm. Or oh, I learned quickly how. Right, right, All it exactly. takes an event in your life to happen to turn things around. Mm -hmm. I found myself in, a, in such a dark place. And then I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see. I didn't, like I couldn't dig my way out. That's why we talk about the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. And to be in a place now, we sing the song, Peace Be Still. You never appreciate peace until you can't sleep. Until you're actually tossing and turning all night. And then you recognize that what a blessing is to be able to lay down and go to sleep. When you're literally so troubled, you can't sleep. Um, you're crying all night long. You just, you want to sleep away and not wake up. I've been there. I know what it is. And when you talk about, when you bring up faithful, is he? <laughs> we, say, we serve a faithful God. Even situations that I got myself into. Talk about that, those things. There's things I made decisions that weren't good and I dug holes for myself. I messed up and did some things. He's still faithful. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> he's Marvelous to see. Gracious. Gracious. Merciful. I mean, God, I mean, you all just went down the line. Without God, that would be me. That, that, that drug addict on the street, that, that would be me without God. But faithful and merciful is he. Church, I was, I guess, in the, in the apostolic church, I was shielded from the devices of the world, in a sense. Mm -hmm. They told you not to do it, and some of the things we didn't know about because we were so shielded, right? Yep, yep, yep. But on the flip side of it, you know, you hear those songs, how they say, God kept my mind, and Ooh. all of those different songs. Ooh. When you get to living life, you, you understand it ain't just a cliche. It's not a it's cliche. The truth. He kept my mind. I literally not could have, but should have. <laughs> Should have lost my mind. You got to pay homage to your singers, man. So yes. that's, I had the list. That's what I was looking for in my bag. Okay. Um, Angela Stewart, right? So yeah, I can go, I can go down the okay, list let's for go. you. So I can start. So we'll start with um, Gene Stewart. Okay. The way I do it, I go by my sections. That way I don't miss anybody. Okay. Gene Stewart, years, best friend. 
Then we have my niece, Lakeisha. We call her Winky. Winky Clark Burgess. Then we have Willette Blakely, okay. um, who's out of Nashville, Tennessee, from Gary, Nashville, Tennessee. Then we have Andrea Langford, who's Bishop Howell's daughter from our church in Minneapolis. And then we have my altos. We have Angela Stewart, my baby sister. That's Jean's sister. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to back up, Winky Clark is Jean and Winky's niece. They're mm -hmm. blood. So then we have so we have Angela Stewart. We have Danielle Clark. Mm -hmm. We have um, Rachel Hurst, mm -hmm. longtime member, also a member of the Hurst family, her and her husband, her children. And then we have my niece Kennedy Hurst. Um, and then we got my tenants. We have Shelton, who we just met in the kitchen, who's co-owner with me with with, with the restaurant, Shelton Johnson. We have Lysanius Shelby. We have my nephew, Rayshon, Jesse Holly, who's, he's, he's living in California. He's on a roll. He's, he's a dancer with a major hip hop. I was been touring all over the world lately. So shouts out to Rayshon, my nephew. We have Jackson Hurst, my nephew. And then we have Jamar Esau, one of my tenants, Jamar Esau Triad. Jamar used to sing it too? Used to, Jamar sings with the company right now. And that's the son of new friends. Really? Why? Why missed the name? Then? You missed Jamar. That's the son of new friends. Really? I was gonna bring him up in when we talked when we talked about Darnell and Jamar. I was yeah, gonna bring okay. up Jamar, this other son, and Jamar is one of my tenants. And then of course Jack Yates. I, I consider him my honorary member forever. You know, he's in Vegas right now. He's not official member of the group, but when we're doing something major, Jack is always a part of what we're doing. That's fine. Okay. And just looking for music, man. And I'm telling you, man, I really brought you. I don't know wow. Praise Ministries okay. first. Also, oh, high praise. Okay. My pastor, Apostle Dwayne Hill and Parthia Hill. Many years I served there, music department, all that. And that's when the early ages of the company, early stages of the company. Mm -hmm. And that church supported me, oh my God, all the way. Just when we went, when we first got nominated for our first stellar, off the Don't Give Up, we got nominated for two stellars that year. Can you imagine how excited our church was? You know, most of the group members were part of the church, were members of the church. So we were all in the same church at that time. Okay, During okay, that time, okay. most, of, most of us were at the church. Our church was elated, head over heels excited. And a lot of them went down there with us, with us, with us. When we didn't win, we got back in town, and our church went and had a Stella Award made and gave us a Stella oh, Award. Sweet. <laughs> I will never forget it. But they supported us. They loved us so much. But, yeah. But, um, so yeah, so, so, so high praise. And then... Then my next church I was actually really proud of was, was Shiloh Temple. And that's where I was until I moved to, which I, I'm still, that's still my church family to me. Bishop Howell will always be. I will always recognize him and Apostle Dwayne Hill as my pastor. So I, I still have a, Dwayne, my pastor, Dwayne Hill just texted me the other day, said, I just heard your song on the radio. He said, I love it. How's this song doing? He was at my live recording back in September. We are still very connected. Was he already in Minnesota when you got to He was, yeah, he was born and raised there. Okay, okay. Yep. So you met him in passing. I met him in passing okay. as a musician. Okay, okay. Yep. Okay. As a musician. So he worked. He was on the staff at Shiloh. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Have, he never went to Shiloh. Darnell was working at. He was at Emmanuel Church of God in Christ hmm. under Bishop Fraser at the time. Hmm. He was a young up and coming musician. He played with Minneapolis Gospel Sounds back in the day to MGS. Hmm. I think we were the first group he played for, hmm. and then he went on to work with other groups. Excelsior. He produced all the stuff with Excelsior. Yes, he wrote "It's My Time." Yes. Lord. And all that stuff. That's Darnell. He produced the Excelsior project projects. I think uh, it was two. Yeah, for sure, at least two. I'm sure more than that, but two for Verity, I believe. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Mm -hmm. And then um uh, then that's when then he birthed Darnell Davis in the remnant. And so that's you know, he's got numerous projects. He had a project on RCA records with Darnell. And then he's been producing my stuff since that project that you talked about. Uh, a song by Darnell Davis that took me by surprise. I'll let nothing separate me. <laughs> I'm like, man, who, who is this man? That man is a writing somebody. Ooh. That man has a catalog out this way. He has written for, as you know, Ricky, mm -hmm. Kevin Lemons. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much all the choir masters mm -hmm. that have recorded songs by Donnie. Shirley Caesar. Mm -hmm. Purpose, God's will, the calling up on people's lives that you never know. Um, he came to my community choir as a kid. New friends. He was my new friends. Mm. As a teenager, Javante grew up watching Excelsior, watching us. Mm. He told me that when they would clean on Saturdays, there would be James Bell Company playing in the house. That's what the, he grew up on this music, watching and listening to us. He was at the last recording, the new friend, the one, the live recording that we did. Mm -hmm. He was there. He, he, you know, 
I won't remember all. He's like, yeah, I was there. Here's where I was sitting. And he remembered everything that happened that night. He's like, I grew up watching. Then later I got a chance to be a part of that choir. We got ready to start DFY, Deliverance for Youth. He, we would leave him new friends with her. So he sat in the car and said, I'm going to talk to you. I want to start a youth choir. You know, I want your blessings. I said, absolutely, 100% do what God is calling you to do. I said, you're not limited to this. And maybe God brought you through here for you to learn what you need to learn. Look at him. I'm not taking credit for that. He also had a pastor who nurtured him in ministry and other people. But I'm thankful that something that we did, he can deem as a part of his journey. Yeah. Um, he's not a pastor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't yeah. come from me. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Clearly, he's a pastor of a church, um, a husband, a father, you know. Um, and well, he got more since then. You know? <laughs> right. But uh, it's just it's a blessing to see him develop and to get to where he is as an artist to watch him from the beginning with this desire to ministry to have ministry to do this and now to see god elevate him the last i heard last week his song was number five on billboard he sang on a pre-show for the stellar awards and i you know i got i was blessed to watch the whole process and javante's path is a testimony a testament to somebody who feels like nobody will give you a chance you know, nobody won't sign me. You know, you've done everything you can to go get a deal. Nobody won't give, give yourself a chance. Push your own ministry. Promote yourself. Pray. Ask God. He said, he said, if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he'll direct you. Get direction from God. If God has called you to it, I promise you he's going to make a way. He's going to open the doors. And Javante is a testimony for those who feel like nobody will open the doors. Open them yourself. Let, let God open the doors for you. You don't need a label. You don't need... To, you need something believe in yourself believe in what god has called you to do and let god elevate you well, i know what i want to talk what about i want to talk about you really? and gospel oh. diary yes i just i i watch your videos on youtube faithfully and i see how god is elevating you because i watch you pretty much when you started and to where god's elevate you to and you're in rooms now with shirley caesar and and i could go on and on with the names but what i really admire about you is that you didn't forget you don't forget about the legends and you pay so much homage it blesses my soul when i see you as a matter of fact i should say at, at, at pastor david blakely's the musical celebration the day before the funeral Vernon oliver price was there from chicago and i mentioned you we talked about you for and i told her i told her i saw her on your show and i told her how much it blesses me to see you honoring those that a lot of the, this generation don't even know who they are but these are the people that you're standing on their shoulders. They're the ones who went through the hard times where they couldn't even go in places that we can go into now. And they did that so that we can be and so that you guys can be where you are now. And thank you for honoring them and not forgetting those, the old school musicians in Chicago. You're honoring, I watch all the episodes and it blesses me. Larry Roberts and Lavonia Whitley, I saw you cover her and just the icons of Chicago. <laughs> I just appreciate you Thank for you not so forgetting the ones that that brought us over to where we are. I, 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 it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so. Oh. My Come son. On. He has he, he has now developed to be one of the choir masters now. Mm -hmm. um, he came from New Friends. Well, he's from Minneapolis. He was a, a son of New Friends. He was a singer, also directed um, some with New Friends. Another one came to me and said, I want to start a youth choir. I want to start a, yep, Jamar, go for it. And God has elevated him. As a matter of fact, I, I got he he called when we went in the car. But that's a, that's a son, not only son, but he's also a, a great friend. He's a member of the company, um, one who did not forget where he came from, his beginnings, and to be who he is, and then to walk back and stand on stage and sing tenor and sing in the background. My group speaks for his humility. Javante made it very clear to me: if you ever do a new friends reunion, do a recording, I'm in the tenor section singing. <laughs> that shows a level of humility. Well, you don't forget your beginnings and, and, and you can still honor those that you feel were well part of your beginning. But I, just, I didn't want to forget him. Yeah. But don't let know, it was, like I said, this is just a spiritual thing. Listen, what's today's date? Today is 23rd. July 23rd, yep. 23rd uh, 2023. Uh, yep. So on that note, since you brought his name up and the spirit hit me like that, uh, there's a video of, if you don't mind, I'm going to use this as a closing song. Absolutely. Uh, there's a video he was singing at Zion. He was singing a beautiful song, 
And I think that, that, that the message of that song encompasses mm. this interview, everything that we talked about. And it's, oh Lord, we give you praise mm. by, you know, by um, Rodney Bryan. Yes, Lord. Praise. So we're going to leave on that note. But I can't leave without saying what I always say. Remember to love on someone and you will change your life. And you know, you. If you're in Phoenix, you must come check out this restaurant. Of course, I'm going to put the address on the screen, but give us the address. Yes, sir. I don't know. But it's... Oh. Uh, <laughs> It's Spitz, mm -hmm. S-P-I-T-Z, Mediterranean Street Food, and we are located in Desert Ridge Marketplace in North Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, see y'all later. Bye. So, here's the kitchen area of Spitz Mediterranean Street Food. <laughs> this is the person I've been talking about. This is Shelton. He's my business partner. Not only his business partner, he's also a member of the company, which we're going to be talking about today. But he's also co-owner uh, for Spitz with me. Yeah. So this is what we're doing when we're not doing the company. Come on, lift your hands, sing to heaven. And all of your mercy, Lord.